to the book of beginnings. So many things that we can learn from this book. Almost all of the first mention uh, application of hermeneutics is here in Genesis. Not all, but almost all. So that first mention is a great study in itself because you can see uh, so many things regarding God's attitude when he first mentioned something. But here we're going to study an episode in the life of Jacob when he was not in battle, but at a place called Peniel. And we're going to see what happened to him there and what are the lessons that we can learn as Jacob fully surrender to God. Genesis chapter 32, let us read this responsibly. And when the people saw that, nasa Exodus ako, I'm sorry. Tinetest ko lang akayo, kung alam nyo. Nung nag-react kayo, sabi ko, oops, mali ang binasa ko. So, nandito na ako ngayon sa Genesis. Amen? Huwag hindi Leviticus, hindi Exodus, Genesis. Amen? Clear ba, mga kapatid? Okay. Pastor Pride yan, ikaw lang nagkamali, pati kami, dinadama niyo mo. Sabi ko sa inyo, meron at meron. Hindi nawawala yan. And Jacob went on his way, and the angels of God met him. And Jacob sent messengers before him to Esau, his brother, unto the land of Seir, the country of Edom. And I have oxen and asses, flocks and men servants, and women servants. And I have sent to tell my Lord that I may find grace in thy sight. And the messengers returned to Jacob, saying, Remain to thy brother Esau, and also he cometh to meet thee, and four hundred men with him. Then Jacob was greatly afraid and distressed, and he divided the people that was with him, and the flocks, and herds, and the camels into two bands. And Jacob said, O God of my father Abraham, and God of my father Isaac, the Lord which says unto me, Return unto thy country, and to thy kindred, and I will deal well with thee. Deliver me, I pray thee, from the hand of my brother, from the hand of Esau, for I fear him, lest he will come and smite me and the mother with the children. And he lodged there that same night, and took of that which came to his hand a present for Esau, his brother. Thirty milk camels with their colts, forty kine, and ten bulls, twenty she asses, and ten foals. And he commanded the foremost, saying, When he saw my brother meet at thee, and asked thee, saying, Whose art thou, and whither goest thou, and whose are these before thee? And 
And so commanded he the second and the third, and all that followed the droves, saying, On this manner shall ye speak unto Esau when ye find him. So went the present over before him, and himself lodged that night in the company. And he took them, and sent them over the brook, and sent over that he had. And when he saw that he prevailed not against him, he touched the hollow of his thigh. And the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint, and he wrestled with him. And he said unto him, What is thy name? And he said, Jacob. And Jacob asked him and said, Tell me, I pray thee, thy name. And he said, Wherefore is it that thou dost ask after my name? And he blessed him there. And as he passed over Pinuel, the sun rose upon him, and he halted upon his thigh. Therefore the children of Israel eat not of the sinew which shrunk which is upon the hollow of the thigh unto this day, because he touched the hollow of Jacob's thigh in the sinew that shrunk. Father, bless us, Lord, as we study thy word. Be the one to be glorified and help us, Lord, to, to learn the lessons that happened to Jacob. And may we see, Lord, the things that we can apply in our lives that we may become better, Lord, compared to today. We praise you, O God for your word and for this opportunity to once again study them. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you very much. So, there are so many places in the life of Jacob and in almost all of these places, something or a great event always happened in his life. We know that he was at Bethel and when he was at Bethel, that's the time that he saw a ladder where angels are ascending and descending. And this actually was the place that Jacob was converted because it was the place where he saw and understood what God wanted him to do in his life. Not fully, but at least the starting point, and that is for him to believe in God. Because before that time, we can see that the life of Jacob is filled with deception. It is filled with scheming. It is filled with doing his own thing. And that is actually the very reason why he was away from his brother because he conspired with his mother to uh, uh, trick Isaac. And that is the reason so that he can steal the blessing of God from Esau. And that is the reason why they became enemies. And the reason why he grew up without his uh, older brother Esau with him. So that was his life. And then because he lived a scheming kind of life, he actually had the taste of his own medicine. When he wanted to have a wife, instead of uh, God giving to him, he worked for Rachel, but instead uh, who, what was given to him is Leah, and then he needed to work for another seven years in order to get the desire of his heart. So you see, the Bible is true when it says that whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. But as I have said, uh, Jacob lived this kind of life when he was away from God. When he was away from what God intends for him to do. Remember when God promised something, 
He's not going to hold it back. When he said that I've given you eternal life, God will never take away that life from us. When God said I will never leave thee nor forsake thee, God will always be with us. When God promised something, he is faithful to fulfill the promise that he had given. And so we need to remember that when God promised to Abraham that he is going to be the father of many nations, that promise will go down his, uh, all of his descendants until the time that God fulfilled all of his promises to Abraham. Amen. So we need to understand all of these things. That is the reason why if Jacob will only understand God's promise, then he will not even desire to turn his back on God. Because there is already an assurance given to him by God. And listen to me. The when, when the time that we got saved, God gave us an assurance that no matter come what may, one day will come that we will be with him. That we are going to spend eternity with God. And we should not ever forget that. And that is the reason why we need to make it as our fuel in order to spur us to continually serving God. Why? Because our future is already secured. Because you see, sometimes our problem is self-preservation. We wanted to preserve ourselves. But ladies and gentlemen, God is the one who promised to preserve us. So don't do the work of God. Because once we do the work of God, we will fail. Why? Because we are not God. And we cannot really know what to do. All we can see is the very near future ahead of us, but God sees until the end. So that is why let us uh, uh, let the piloting to God, let us leave the driving to God, let us leave the directing to God, let us leave the working to God, let us just allow God to work in us, through us, that He may accomplish His perfect will in our lives. Listen, the only reason why we astray is because we do it our way. And this is what happened to Jacob. Does he ever really have to steal the blessing from Esau? No. He was already promised. Posterity by God. He was already promised and assured by God that he is going to be a part of that uh, uh, many people that will even outnumber or will be as the number of the sand on the sea. It was already a promise of God. The blessing is already there. He does not have to steal any blessing from anybody because God will see to it that what he promised will definitely come true. Amen? And thus it starts the uh, what we call adventure in the life of Jacob. An adventure that should have been easy. An adventure that should have been, should have been smooth. An adventure that should have been godly. But it became a roller coaster adventure wherein there are ups and there are downs and there are even loops that experience along the way. So as I have said, praise God because God, long before Jacob was ever born, God already prepared Bethel so that he will be converted and he will realize that God is God. Amen? And then after that, even though he got converted over there at Bethel, there are still so many mistakes in the life of Jacob. Until he reached Peniel. And when he reached Peniel, or Peniel, you will see that the scheming is becoming uh, what you call few and very far in between. You will see that obedience is becoming easier for him. And trusting God is not a problem anymore. And this is what we are going to see in Genesis chapter 32. Jacob's full surrender to God. Jacob's full surrender to God. So after Jacob left home, he went to Haran. And in Haran, he, mar he married and he remained with Laban, his father-in-law, for 20 years. 
And then, after that, he is now on his way home. That's why, uh, verses, uh, chapter 32, verses 1 to 23, is his preparation going home. He wanted to go back. Why? Because God promised him that he need to go back to his kindred. God promised him that you need to go back to your country. God promised him that you need to go back where you came from because I am going to deal well with you when you are there. So Jacob must go there and he must obey God. Amen. When God promised something and you obey God, then you will see that the blessing will be there. But sometimes before we actually receive the blessing, there will be testings and trials along the way. Because blessing should never be cheap. When blessing is cheap, then we are not going to give much value on it. But if a blessing will cost us something, then we are going to guard it, take care of it, and we are really going to enjoy it. Amen? Do you remember David when he was asking for a threshing floor? And then Aruna said, you are the king, you can have it for free. And then David said, I'm not going to offer anything to God that costs me nothing. Why? Because what? When you offered something to God that is cheap, then it is something that is not sweet smelling savor in the nostrils of God. Amen. So whatever we do for God, it must cost us something. Whatever we give to God, it must cost us something. Whatever we do for God, it must be our best because God deserves the very best from you and from me. Amen. So we can see that blessing is promised, but blessing does not come easy. Or it may not come cheap. So as he was planning to go back, what he did is uh, he sent sort of a messenger to talk to his brother Esau. Because he was afraid. Why? Because he tricked Esau. He deceived his brother. He stole the blessing of being the firstborn from his brother. And he knew that because of that, his brother has all the right to take his life or to take vengeance because of what he did to his brother. That's why his name Jacob means supplanter, a schemer, a deceiver. That is the meaning of his name. So in order to be sure, he sent somebody to meet with Esau. What does that mean? It means that he may have started trusting God but he's not trusting God fully. Because if God said, I am going to deal well with thee there, it means that there is a safe passage going there. Nobody can stop him, not even Esau. Nobody can hurt him, not even Esau. But this is our nature. We wanted to be sure. And as long as we are not sure, we're not going to move. That is the reason why God is calling so many a Christian to start a ministry to go in some other places in order for them to be a blessing but they will not move. Why? Because they must first see to it that everything is okay before they go there. Okay na ba yung support? Okay na ba yung lugar? May mga tao na baron? Meron na bang mga nauna? Hindi kaya ako pababayaan ng Diyos doon? Maganda ba yung lugar? Meron bang magandang ospital? Meron bang ma, mga lugar na, na kapag ka mainit, mapupunta ang kaming mag-asawa para magpalamig, etc., etc. And when we cannot see clearly, then we're not going to move. Ladies and gentlemen, where is faith if you need to see it first? Before you move. So he sent a messenger, which is wrong. That reminds me of Moses. God already promised the land to them. God already said that Canaan will be yours. But instead of going in and getting that land, occupying the land, they sent 12 spies. And we saw the result. It melted the heart of the people. Discouraged them. Why? Because they did not trust God fully in whatever things that God has told them to do. So he sent somebody to first go to Esau. To talk to him so that he can be sure of the things that may happen. So Sayyab said, at Bethel, 
he was converted, but he's going to be convert uh, to be consecrated in Piniel. So this is now the space between his conversion and his consecration. You see, sometimes there is a gap of years between conversion and consecration. When you got saved, sometimes you will not really, there is really not much change. Yes, you will repent of your sin. Yes, you will accept or receive Jesus as your Savior. Yes, you will be saved. But then again, uh, the uh, consecration will not come until so many months, until so many years. There will be a lot of struggles until we come to a point that we are going to fully trust God in our lives. So it took Bethel and Peniel before Jacob was fully surrendered to God. You see, our conversion took place when we accepted Jesus as Savior, but our consecration will only happen when we fully surrendered everything into the hands of God. That is why there are people who may be saved, but they are not sold out for God. There are people who may be saved, but they will not serve God. There are people who may be saved, but they are going to hold something from God. Yes, you will see a semblance of salvation. You will see a semblance of service. You will see a semblance of sacrifice. But that is all there is to it. There is no full surrender into the will of God. Pasaw, saw, saw, saw lang. Kumbaga sa swimming pool. That can be applied into our knowledge of God. When we got saved, we can only understand trickles about God. But when we continue, we'll understand more about God. And when we continue, we will understand yet more about God. And when we dig deeper, we're going to understand more about God. And when, when we uh, dig more, then we can know more about God. And then when we continue on digging, we will see that we are now swimming in our knowledge of God. And if we knew God better, and if we knew God more, then our lives will be more of a glory to God and a blessing to other people. Amen? It can be applied to our knowledge in God. It can be applied in our service to God. It can be applied in our commitment to God. We may only commit our uh, foot to God. Or we can commit our ankle to God. Or we can commit up to our knees to God. Or we can commit up to our waist to God. Or we can commit up to our chest to God. But we can commit everything to God and swim in the blessing of God. Amen. So you see, we need to launch out into the deep. Why? Because that is where the perfect will of God resides. Amen. So we need to do something. We should not stay at battle. We need to continue our journey. We need to go to Piniel. And we need to go beyond Piniel. Until the time that God will take us home. Until the time that we are going to fully serve God. Until the time that like Paul, we can say, I have finished my course. Amen? So that is how we need to serve God. But sometimes, it takes so many years between our conversion and our consecration. Especially those people who cannot plant themselves in a local church where they church hop. You cannot grow when you're church hopping. You cannot grow when you're trying to find what will make you comfortable. Growth is usually uncomfortable. But those 
those discomforts will be the one to actually effect growth in your life. That is why training is hard. You train for the military, it will never be easy. You will be humiliated. You will be fatigued. You will be beaten sometimes. You will, be, uh, you will experience hunger. You will experience waking very early in the morning and sometimes you will be ridiculed. But it doesn't matter. You keep on keeping on. And when you finish, you are going to be a different man when you first entered in. That's the same thing in our Christian life. Our faith must be exercised in order for our faith to grow. Amen? So that is why we need to keep on keeping on. A Christian should never be stagnant. A Christian must always be moving and a Christian must always be moving forward. So, it may take sometimes, or there is a gap of years between conversion and consecration. But, listen, consecration can and should be simultaneous with conversion. That is God's will. It should be at the same time. Oh, pastor, how, how, how can we do that? Once you got converted and then you will already surrender your life fully to the Lord. Yes, that is God's will. That is the perfect will of God. Why? Because, listen, if God can save you from hell, what is the reason why you cannot commit your life fully to God? I'm not saying that you're going to be a preacher after you got saved. I'm not saying that the moment you got saved, you're going to be a serving God full time into the ministry. I'm not saying that after you got saved then you're going to sing in the choir and all of these things. No, you need to grow. But ladies and gentlemen, surrender is a state of mind. It is a state of life. It is your condition before God. Lord, you saved me. I'm yours. I belong to you. That is consecration. And once you do that, then the process of consecration will start in your life. You will not turn back. You will not be carnal. You will not be doing those things that will waste your time doing things for yourself and by yourself instead of doing things according to the will of God. Look at Acts chapter 9, verse number 6. This is a, a what God wants for every Christian. And he trembling and astonished said, Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? That is, he got saved. Amen? He got saved on the road to Damascus. And after his salvation, he said, Lord, what do you want me to do? And that is consecration. So you will see that Paul did not waste any time. When he got saved, he fully surrendered himself to God. He did not waste any time. And the Lord said unto him, Arise and go into the city. And it said, Be told thee what thou must do. And we will see that Paul did everything that he was told since the moment that he got saved. That's God's will. It did not happen to Jacob. It did not happen to Abraham because we, we saw that Abraham had a lot of misadventure like the preaching last Sunday when, when he fathered uh, Ishmael. Via Hagar, via Hagar. Why? Because his consecration came later. Not at the moment that he was converted by God. And he was the father of faith. You see, even the father of faith falters. Even the father of faith commits sin. Even the father of faith is sometimes without faith. Even the father of faith can be blinded by the devil. But ladies and gentlemen, a man who is grounded in faith, a man whose foundation is faith, will always see the light at the end of the tunnel, will always see a silver lining. And no matter how many times that person may fall, he can stand up and move forward. Why? Because faith will keep him and faith will sustain him. The just shall live. By faith. And without faith, it is impossible to please God. So that is God's will. That there should not be a gap between our conversion and our consecration. This thing should be 
simultaneous because if we are like that, then God can maximize His use of us. Do you know the reason why conversion and consecration is usually not simultaneous? Because we have built up so much pride in our lives that it has to be broken down first before we can even surrender to God. Ang dahil na kasi natin na build na pride. Kaya pagka-save, hindi natin maisuko lahat sa Panginoon. Kailangan pa tayong durugin ng durugin ng durugin ng Diyos bago natin maintindihan na kailangan pala nating isurrender ang lahat-lahat sa Panginoon. We will keep on fighting para tayong mga Texas. Alam niyo mga Texas? Yan yung sinasabong na manok. Pag ang manok mo hindi Texas, pag tinamaan ng pupog, takbo, diretso sa kawali. Ang Texas, hanggat humihinga, lalabang pa yan. Kahit nakahiga na yan, hanggat humihinga, pag yung kaway lumapit, lalaban pa yan, tatariin pa yan. Ganun dapat, ganun tayo pala hanggat kaya nating i-preserve yung sarili natin at labanan ng kalooban ng Diyos sa ating buhay, lalabanan at lalabanan natin. Kaya kinakailangan gumawa ng paraan ng Diyos na dalin tayo sa kasukdulan para lang maunawaan natin, hindi pala natin kaya ang Diyos. Ginawa ng Diyos yan kay Paul. Ano sabi ng Diyos? It is hard for thee to kick against the brick. And Paul left with nothing but to repent of his sin, to accept the Lord Jesus Christ, and to tell him, Lord, what would thou have me to do? I am fighting you for most of my life. I am going against you for most of my time. But I did not realize and I did not understand as I understand it now that you are the one. You are the true and the living God and you are the one that I should serve in my life. So when he got saved, he said, Lord, tell me and I am going to do it. There was no lapse of time between his conversion and his consecration. So this is what God expects from us. But in the lives of so many of us, I can say 100% of us here, it did not happen. And until now, we are still struggling with our sin. We're still in the period of defeat before we will learn the secret of a victorious life. And that is to put everything into the hands of God. Amen? So what, what are the mistakes of Jacob that, that took time before his consecration after his salvation? We can see in, verse, in verses 13 to 23, we will not read it again because we have read it, but look at verse 11. This is what happened. He said, Deliver me, I pray thee, from the hand of my brother, from the hand of Esau. For I fear him, lest he will come and smite me, and the mother with the children. This is his mistake. He cried to God to deliver him, but he skimped in order to deliver himself. Lord, iligtas mo ko! And then gumawa siya ng paraan para iligtas niya ang kanyang sarili. Hindi niyo ba napapansin ang karamihan ng prayers natin ganyan? Panginoon, tulungan mo ko! And then tayo naman pala gagawa ng paraan. Tayo naman pala ang kikilos. Yung palang iniisip natin, yun pa rin yung ating gagawin. He already prayed to God, Lord, deliver me. If you pray to God, you need to trust God. You need to put things in the hands of God and let God do His will in your life. Amen. Hindi, Panginoon, ligtas mo ko. Ito, Panginoon, gagawin ko ha, para maligtas ko sarili ko. Hindi nga ikaw ang takapagligtas eh. Hindi nga ikaw ang nakapangyayari eh. Hindi nga ikaw ang magtatawid sa, sa landas na yun. Ang Diyos ang magtatawid sa iyo sa landas. Kailan pa? Palagi! Magpakailanman. Amen? 
God never fails. So he prayed. But after he prayed, he put matters into his own hands. Instead of leaving them there in the hands of God, we begin to plan for ourselves. We do not trust God to work for us. We are just making God as an object to give us inspiration so that we can do what we want to do for ourselves. Yan ang ginagawa natin. Ginagawa lang natin ng Diyos na parang inspirasyon. At least nasabi ko sa Diyos ha. Ginagawa natin siyang escape. Panakip butas. Kaya kita mo, merong mga mana ng palataya kung ano-anong pagsasasabihin na magaling sa buhay niya. At saka huli-hulihan ang lahat ng yan ay dahil sa Diyos. Pagkatapos niyang sabihin, ako ang magaling. Ako ang matibay. Ako ang kumilos. Ako ang gumawa. Ako ang dahilan. Biglang-bigla. Pero lahat ng yan ay dahil sa Diyos. To God be the glory. E napalakpaka na siya ng ilang beses. Amen? That is our problem. We are not letting God be God in our lives. But the truth of the matter is that we are making ourselves the God of God. Why? Because we tell Him what to do. Lord, save me! And this is how you're going to do it. Hmm. Tama, mali. Lord, iligtas mo ko, sabi ni Jacob. But this is how you're going to do it. You bless what I'm going to do. Because I already asked you to deliver me. Therefore, you deliver me in the way that I want you to deliver me. No, God will deliver you His way. Not our way, amen? And then, he did not understand that he had to be broken before God could bless him. That is what Jacob did not understand. That God cannot use a person who is not yet broken. Na, na, nakakita na ba kayo ng kabayong ginagamit sa karera o pinang gagamit sa pagtatrabaho? Binay-break mo na yan. Kasi pag hindi mo brinay kang kabayo, wild dyan, magtatatakbo yan, sisipaing ka yan. Yung wild na kabayo, pag sinakyan mo, magwawala yan hanggang tumalsik ka. So it must first be broken. And when you successfully break a horse, then you can tell that horse whatever you want that horse to do and that horse will follow you. Why? Because you have broken his will. This is his will. This is what I want to do. The horse says, I will kick. The horse has said, I will run. The horse, I'm going to be wild. But you restrained him. You did something so that he cannot do what he wants to do. So when you have broken his will, he will follow yours. Same thing with us. Same thing with our children. When we discipline them, they have their own will. You break it! And once we have broken the will of our children, they are going to follow our will. Kasi nakita nila, hindi pala ko uubra. So, yung gusto ng magulang ko, yun ang gagawin ko dahil hindi pwede yung gusto ko. And that is something that Jacob could not understand at first. He thought that now that I am saved, I'm going to do whatever I want to do because I know that I will do what is right because I am now a child of God. Ladies and gentlemen, that is not automatic. When you become a child of God, then you need to be trained as a child of God so that you can act really as a child of God. So he does not understand that there must be First, be a breaking before there will be a using. It means that we must first yield our lives to Him so that God can break us and use us. God will not give His glory to another and we have to be so yielded that there is only one thing that we want to do in life and that is for the glory of God. But until that time comes, then we are not going to have a victorious Christian life. So what are the steps 
into victory and power. What are the things that we need to do so that these things will happen in our lives? Number one, look at verse number 24. And Jacob was left alone. And there wrestled the man with him until the breaking of the day. We can see here that Jacob was left alone with his conscience and with God. You see, sometimes the reason why we cannot realize where we are at, sometimes we cannot realize what is wrong in our lives is because we were never alone. We are always with people. We are always busy. We are always doing so many things. And we do not have a quiet time in our life. There is not a time in our life when we can be alone with God, alone with our conscience, nothing bothering us, but looking at our life in the eyes of God. But when he was left alone, that was the time that he realized the wrong things that he's doing in his life. That was the time that he realized and saw himself to what he really is. And then later on, you will see that he said, I'm not even worthy of the least of your mercies. Why? That was the time when you see God, you will see that you are nothing. Remember Isaiah? When he went to the temple, when the king died, he saw the Lord high and lifted up. And then once he saw the glory of God and the holiness of God, he says, I am undone. I am nothing. He says, I am unworthy of anything that comes from God. And that was the time when we, he realized the will of God in his life. So when God asked the important question that whom are they going to send, he says, here am I, Lord. Send me. So we need to be alone with God. We need to really take time to be alone with him so that we could ask God to search our hearts so that we can really understand who we really are. Look at Psalms 139 verses 23 to 24. This is a turning point in the life of many a people of God. Search me, O God, and know my heart. You know why? Why did David ask God to search his heart? Because the heart is deceitful above all. And David cannot know his heart. Listen, Christians, sometimes we think that our motive is right, but later on it will turn out to be wrong. We cannot know our hearts. That's why David says, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts and see if there be any wicked way in me. So that if there is something wrong, you can lead me. And lead me in the way everlasting. Because I do not know how. I am corrupt. And everything that I do and I think is corrupted. Don't you know what Isaiah 64 says? That even our righteousness are as filthy rugs. Why? Whatever we do will be contaminated. Because we are the virus ourselves. Tayo yung virus. So ano man gawin natin? Contaminated yan. Kaya nga sabi niya, Lord, search me, O God. And lead me in the way everlasting. Only God can lead us out of that misery. Out of that position in life. Out of the miry clay. So that we can experience how to be successful in the sight of God. You see, a man wrestled with him all night. If I'm going to apply it in our lives today, what uh, Jacob did is he prayed all night. He did not even sleep. He communed with God all night. There was a wrestling. Why? Because once you want to understand who you are, you're going to wrestle with it. Why? Because you always think that you are good. Gano man kasama ang tao, sasabihin niya, mas mabuti naman ako kay. Talaga namang mayroong mas mabuti. Kasok doon lang yan, mas mabuti pa naman ako kay satanas. Laging meron kang mas mabuti. Pero hindi yun ang dapat mong hanapin. Ang dapat natin hanapin, napakasama ko pala. At kailangan ako maligtas sa kasamahang ito. Sa aking buhay. There will be struggle. Why? Because you will not accept who you are until God explicitly showed you 
who we really are in His sight according to His own estimate. And there was this wrestling. Of course, this is a, an actual uh, wrestling that happened. Hindi yung wrestling na ano, WWE. Ha? Drama yun. Ito, ano to? True to life ito. This is a Christophany. This is the Lord Jesus Christ appearing in the flesh. And there was actually this wrestling. Of course, this is a, a what we call one-sided match, if ever, because the strength of Jacob is no match to the strength of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? No match because he is wrestling against the Creator of the heavens and the earth. He is wrestling against the person who created him. And why is it that the angel even asked him to let him go? Well, God is making him appear that he is winning a fight. But the truth of the matter, he is not. He is testing the resiliency or the resilience of Jacob. Why? Because before God will give you his blessing, you must show him that you really want it. You must show him that you desire it. You must show him, I'm going to use all of my strength. I'm going to give up everything so that to get that blessing. And I'm not going to let you go until you bless me. God must see the desire of our hearts in wanting something. Same thing. Do you want to live a holy life? Struggle with it. Desire it. Do you want to have a happy family and discipline your children? It is a work. A very hard work. But it can be done if you will desire it in your life. Do you want a better life in the future? Do you want to build a good family? You need to desire it. You need to, to put everything, all the effort that you can get into it. Because it will not happen Overnight. It is not something that is automatic in our lives. There must be that desire for that blessing. And because Jacob is fed up with his former life. You see, a life of deception, a life of being deceived, a life of running away, a life of not living in your own place, a life that is ups and downs, a life that is unpredictable. Jacob at this time said, I want a blessing. I want a more consistent life. I want a life of victory from God. And that is why he held on to the man the whole night. And he does not want to let him go because that man wanted to see if Jacob means business with him. Amen? And in order for that man to show how powerful he is, he just touched the tie of Jacob and it went out of joint. You see the power? Actually, God does not even have to touch it. Every joint will be out of its place if God wanted to do. In the twinkling of an eye. Any moment, any time. But God, but God wanted Jacob to realize if you really want it, you pay a price for it. There is always a price. There is a price for discipleship. If anyone will come after me, let him deny himself. Take up his cross and follow me. And straightway they left all and followed him. And you will see uh, at one time even Peter complained. We left our mother, father, children, houses and lands to follow thee. And what do we have? And then the Lord Jesus Christ says that whoever left father and mother and children and siblings and houses and lands will find more of it if you are going to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. There is always a price to pay if you want something good or godly that will happen in your life. Look at Romans 6.13. This is the key. Romans 6.13. Know ye not, 6.13. I know this not. Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness 
unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. That is the secret, yielding everything to God. And when we yield everything to God, then God will use it for His glory and for our victory. Pastor, how can you say that the man who wrestled with Jacob is actually the Lord Jesus Christ? Let's look at Hosea chapter 12, verses 4 and 5. Hosea chapter 12, verses 4 and 5. 4 and 5. Yea, he had power over the angel and prevailed. He wept and made supplication unto him. He found him in Bethel, and there he spake with us. Even the Lord God of hosts, the Lord, is his memorial. So that's the Lord. He found him in Bethel, and then later on in Penuel. And he spoke with him. So this is a Christophany, and Jacob was so blessed because he said, I saw God face to face. Amen? Not in his essence, but in his appearance in bodily form or Christophany. And his life, he said, was preserved. When God broke Jacob, he could only cling to God in weakness. Look at verse number 26. Verse 26. Chapter 32. Uh, okay lang, talaga madalas tayo magkamari. And he said, let me go. For the day break it. And he said, I will not let thee go except thou bless me. You see? Can you see the irony here? He says, I'm not going to let you go unless you bless me. Jacob is actually showing his weakness in clinging to him. You might think that, oh, Jacob is strong because he can keep the person with him and will not let the person go. No, that's wrong. He says, I'm not going to let you go until you bless me. He says, I am nothing. I am nothing. That's why I'm going to cling to you in my weakness so that you can bless me. And when God touched him, he saw how weak he was. And in our weakness, that is the only time that we can enjoy the strength of God. We cannot enjoy the strength of God when we are strong. Because only when we are weak, then we are strong. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9. Look at what the Bible says. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Until and unless we realize that we are weak, until and unless we accept that we are weak, then God's strength will never be made perfect in us. That's why Paul says, Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities. That's why after Paul sought three times for God to heal him, he quit, he surrendered, and he said, this is what God will use. So that the power of Christ may, may rest upon me. That is why you don't take any credit because, because it will make you think that you are strong. And when you are strong, God cannot use you anymore. Do you remember what happened to Hezekiah? When he thought that he was strong, then that was the time that God made him low. You cannot take the glory from God. Amen? So you need to understand that you need to be broken because that is the only time that God can use us. Listen, God must reduce us to a minimum before he can work through us to the maximum. God, I repeat, must reduce us to a minimum before he can work through us to the maximum. 
until we reach the bottom, God cannot lift us up. Amen. So we can see, again in verse 26, that Jacob earnestly desired the blessing and he was determined to get it. He said, I will not let thee go except thou bless me. Question, are you hungry for God's blessing? Are you thirsty for, for God's blessing? Are you determined to get it? Whatever the cost may be. If you are that determined, then God will see to it that you're going to receive His blessing. We must be determined. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. Once you step into following Jesus, you burn all the bridges behind. Because there will be no more turning back. There will be no more turning back. And then lastly, God bless him there at Peniel. Look at verse 29. And Jacob, Jacob asked him and said, Tell me, I pray thee thy name. And he said, Wherefore is it that thou dost ask after my name? And he blessed him. But before that, we can see that in uh, verse number, when, when God changed his name, 28, uh, 27 and 28, first before we go there. And he said unto him, What is thy name? And he said, Jacob. And he said, Thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. For as a prince thou hast power with God and with men, and hast prevailed. You see, in the Old Testament, when your name is changed, it means that your character has changed. They named you after your character. Your name shows who you are during that time. But in our time, names are fancy. Good sounding, sometimes different. Like for example, we have a newscaster before. Maybe you do not know him. Mari Kaimo. Did you know him, Mari Kaimo? He's a very handsome newscaster. He's a part Japanese. That's why he was called Mari Kaimo. And sometimes names are just, you know, sometimes even people are making fun of names. Amen? Like Miri Revili. Should be the name Mili Trib Revili. I'm not making fun of it, but uh, there is a purpose, there is a reason. It means millennium, tribulation. Revelation. Ang purpose ko pagka mabait siya, millennium ang tawag. Mili, may blessing. Pag matigas ang ulo, trib, may palo. Pag normal lang, reveli. Kaya lang sabi ni Maribel, subukan mo. Pag hindi ikaw ang dumaan sa tribulation, kaya inalis ko. Hindi kasi dadaan ng kristyano sa tribulation. Amen? Kaya inalis ko na. So it usually... Mark the chains of your character. Do you know the blessing here? What do you think is the blessing that Jacob is asking? Isipin ninyo. Unless thou bless me, anong blessing? Pera ba? Eh, marami na siyang pera dito eh. Do you napansin? Nagpadala nga siya ng maraming regalo kay ano eh. Iso eh, para maapis niya eh. Anong blessing? Ang hinihingi ni Jacob. Anong blessing kayo na-expect niya? Ano yung ano yun? Yung baguhin siya ng Diyos. Yung magbago siya. Kaya nung ibigay yung blessing, agad-agad pinalitan yung pangalan niya. At alam niyo nangyari after that. Look at the, the last three verses. 30, 31, and 32. And Jacob called the name of the place Peniel, for I have seen God face to face and my life is preserved. There was a life-changing event that happened to him at Peniel. 
Look at 31. And as he passed over Penuel, the sun rose upon him, and he halted upon his thigh. He saw that he is weak, and only God is strong. He bore the mark of God's blessing in his life. Mga kapatid, makinig kayo. Yung blessing na yun, kadalasan merong kapalit yun. Kadalasan may paalala yun. Kaya alam mo ano man na nangyari sa buhay mo noon, na hindi ka naman na ganun ngayon, hayaan mo lang yun. Kasi yun ang laging magpapaalala sa iyo na doon ka nang galing. Na ganong klasik ang tao. Na kung ano ka man ngayon, ito'y dahil lamang sa pagpapala ng Diyos. Amen? At magbukas tayo sa next chapter, 33. Tapos na yung introduction natin na tignan natin paano naging matagumpay si Jacob sa kanyang buhay. Oh, hindi pa victory pinag-uusapan? Wala pa naman victory dito eh. So let's go to chap chapter 33 and we will start our study of the full surrender of Jacob. Chapter 33. Meron ba? Chapter 33. <laughs> and Jacob lifted up his eyes and looked and behold Esau. Ito na. Esau came. Ito yun eh. Ito yung pinaghahandaan niya eh. Ito yung pinagpe-pray niya. Ito yung kinakatakutan niya. Tama? Ito yung weakness niya. Ito yung dahilan kung bakit yung kanyang conversion at consecration napakahaba ng panahon bago nangyari. Andain niya ang ginawang plano, sabi niya. Gati, inatin sa dalawa ang ari-ari ang ko para pag pinatay niya ito, tumakas itong isa. Oh, pasiguro. Okay niya? Tapos, ikaw, ito yung gift mo. Mauna ka. Ikaw naman, ito yung gift. Susunod ka. Ikaw, ito yung gift. Doon ka. Ikaw, ito yung gift. Doon ka. Mauna na kayo. <laughs> Para pag pinagpapatay kayo, patay kayo. Ako buhay pa. Ay, si Jacob eh. Schemer. Lahat ng ginagawa niya, pakabig. Pero ito na. And Jacob lifted up his eyes and looked and behold, Esau came and with him 400 men. Hindi siya mag-isa. May kasamang apat na raang lalaki at kadalasan mga mandirigma ito. Naalala niyo nung, sabihin, nung utusan siya, sabi niya, pupunta raw dito ang kapatid mo. May kasama apat na daan. At ano nangyari kay Jacob sa chapter 32? At nahintakutan siya. At nanalangin sa Diyos sa verse 11. Pero gumawa ng paraan para iligtas ang sarili niya. And he divided the children unto Leah and unto Rachel and unto the two handmaids. Verse number 2. And he put the handmaids and their children foremost and Leah and her children after and Rachel and Joseph hindermost. Sunod, sunod. Then, verse 3, And he passed over before them, pero nilagpasan niya lahat. Diba dati, una na kayo. Una na kayo. Kung madali kayo, ayos lang. At least buhay pa ako. Pero ngayon, hindi na. Nilagpasan niya silang lahat. At nauna siyang lumapit. Nakita niyo na yung pagbabago? Consecrated na siya. Iba na. And he passed over them, and bowed himself to the ground seven times until he came near to his brother. Perfect respect. Perfect respect. Seven times he respected his brother. Kaya nga, may nakakausap ako na ano eh. Sabi niya, hindi mahal ng Diyos lahat ng tao eh. Calvin is eh. Sabi ko, hindi. Mahal ng Diyos lahat ng tao. Hindi. Binigay niya ito eh. Sabi niya, and Jacob he loved, and Esau he hated. Totoo yun. Pero ang question ko, before God hated Esau, did he not love him first? You see, God loved all of us and the reason why we get the ire of God is because we keep on rejecting God. But God loved all of us. He gave His Son for us. Pero, kita mo si Jacob, he respected his brother. And he bowed 
near to his brother. Look at verse number 4. And Esau ran to meet him and embrace him. See? What God promised he will do. No matter even if Jacob did not scheme a plan, this will be the result of their meeting because God already changed the heart of Esau towards Jacob. You see, the Bible says that God can even change the heart of the king. And favor his people like what happened to uh, Nehemiah when he asked for favor to rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. God can always turn the tables around and can change the heart of people to favor us. And Esau ran to meet him. Ano yung nagpapaano sa inyan? Uh, what does that remind you of? The father of the prodigal son. Amen? He ran! Not walk casually, but he ran! He actually was the one who was very excited for their reconciliation. He ran and embraced him and fell on his neck and kissed him. What does that remind you? Nung kakanta si Maribel tsaka si Nancy. Kinis pa ni Nancy si Maribel. Di ba? Naalala mo yan? And they wept. You see? The love. But Esau supposedly hated Jacob because he stole his birthright. But what happened? It's a miracle from God. That's why when God promised something, let us not be afraid. Because God will fulfill His promise. Verse number 5. And he lifted up his eyes and saw the women and the children and said, Who are those with thee? And he said, the children which God hath graciously given thy servant. Sabi niya sa'yo, mga yan, pamangkin mo. Oh! May mga pamangkin ako, labing isa, ang dami. Ay, di ba? Excited siya. Look at verse number 6. Then the handmaidens came near, they and their children, and they bowed themselves. Naturuan niyang gumalang mga anak niya. Nagbaw sila sa kanya. Look at verse number 7. And Leah also with her children came near and bowed themselves. And after came Joseph near and Rachel and they bowed themselves. Eight. Tuloy-tuloy na natin, kapatid. Bago ko ibigay yung outline. And he said, What meanest thou by all this drove which I met? And he said, These are to find grace in the sight of my Lord. Kita mo yung paggalang Lord ang tawag niya. Pero huwag niyo matawag yung Lord. <laughs> Lord! <laughs> Delikado tayo dyan. And he so said, I have enough. My brother, keep that thou hast unto thyself. Kita mo, yung, yung ina, ina, ano yun, baka bawiin sa akin, binibigay na niya, ayaw pang tanggapin. Naka niya ibig sabihin, kung paano kinilos ng kamay ito ng Diyos. Sa buhay nila, and he so said, I have enough, my brother, verse 10. And Jacob said, Nay! Kita mo, hindi lang kapatid ng turing niya sa kanya. Amen! Sabi niya, Nay, I pray thee, if now I have found grace in thy sight, then receive my present at my hand, for therefore I have seen thy face, as though I have seen the face of God, and thou was pleased with me. Why did he say that? Because he saw God in what happened that day. Tsaka nakita mo, pagbabago rito ni Jacob, dati mautak siya, makasarili, swapang. Ngayon, hindi. No, no. Kung talagang nakasumpong ako ng biyaya sa'yo, tanggapin mo. Hindi tulad natin. Eto, hindi, wag na. Hindi, hindi, sige. Sige na, hindi, wag na. Oh, sige, okay. Oh, di ba? Hindi pa tayo consecrated. May style pa tayong ganun eh. Pero si Jacob, hindi na. Hindi na. Yung offer natin, pakunyari lang yun eh. <laughs> sige na, hindi, hindi, hindi. Hindi, sige na. Sige, sige. sige ha? Ah, yung iba naman. Hindi, huwag na. Sige, sige ha, pinipilit mo kasi. Ha? Kaya, malayo pa tayo kay Jacob eh. Tuloy natin. Verse 11. Take 
take, I pray thee, my blessings that is brought to thee, because God hath dealt graciously with me, and because I have enough. And he urged him, and he took it. And if you will read until the end, everything that Jacob asked from Esau was given to him, was accepted by Esau, and now they are on their way back home where God will fully bless Jacob in his life. So he found the victory. Why? When he became consecrated to God, God took over and now directed Jacob for the rest of his life. And you know after that, he was given a child from his favorite wife. And that's the youngest. Who was that? Benjamin. Another blessing from God. Amen? Kasi 11 lang dito yung anak eh. May isa pa. At yun na yung magiging pagkakumpleto ng 12 tribes of Israel. Yung bang promise ng Diyos ang yari kay Jacob? Yes, it did. Why? Because Jacob consecrated himself to God. If we will just fully surrender our lives to God, then God can use us to the fullest and for His glory. Amen? Okay, so